That's right. This is happening. This is the next edition, the next crossover. It's confirmed. It's real. It's happening. The first champion we're going to have is Loki. All of these guys are going to be coming from the Barbarians. We have Loki, the Deceiver, Thor, Feyhammer, Freya, Fate Weaver, and Odin, Feyfather. I don't even know if it's really called like a an IP, right? Can, this, can, can anybody claim this? I mean, technically, Thor is just kind of, you know? Loki is going to be a support champion, spirit affinity. Thor is going to be magic affinity, attack based. Freya will be defense based, force void of course is going to be odin father i thought it was really nice that they're going to be in the barbarians since they kind of already fit the theme they've already got champions that fit the uh asgardian-esque type thing like they got sill they have um like god what's this guy's name this frost giant here alten he's already kind of in the mix so it kind of makes sense I think Odin is going to be like one of the harder ones to get. Probably going to be locked behind like a champion chase or something. Um, Loki is going to be a login. We'll talk about that in a minute here. I'll show you guys this. But I think Thor, I'm, I'm really looking forward to Thor because I want Thor to really fucking nuke. Like I really want him to smack. But yeah, so these are the four champions coming to raid soon. And um, before I dive into... More of that, let me go ahead and show you guys some of the pictures that I have. So we have a new background. All of these champions are going to get new backgrounds in the champion index. Kind of reminds me of Ikarl, but you can see these are all images from the teaser that they gave us. The You know how I did that video where I dove in and I thought, okay, well, I think this is going to be this. This shipyard could represent this. This shield and helmet could represent this. Like, it's all here. It's all in the background. And yes, guys, there is going to be a new dungeon as well. As you can see, they've even got pictures of certain champions back here within Raid. Uh, I think this is Oboro. I think that's Arbiter. I don't know who this is over here. Can we even zoom in? Yeah, I can zoom in. Okay, I don't know who this champion is. Looks kind of like Arbiter in the Jade Serpent um, outfit. This looks like Oboro. Odin is going to be the big boss. Oh, this is the Void Sylvan Watcher, I think. The, the stone skin dude, I forgot his name. Here is the cover art for the promo for Asgard. And uh, here's another uh, variation of Asgard. This is Loki and his clone. This is going to be another pro promo for Asgard, Odin. And here's another Asgard picture. So for the champions themselves, here is one. We have Freya right here. Thor's um, avatar right here. Here's Loki, obviously. You can see he's redhead and he's got the green with the red eyes. Pretty cool. You know, as always, they do pretty damn well with um, with the with the character art here. I mean, that's why Raid stands out so much. Freya, right? Looking sick. Got the shield, the ethereal looking spear. She looks regal as fuck. She looks like a queen king allfather the sword that if you guys played ragnarok there was a sword that loki used that kind of just floated around everywhere and attacked for him had its own mind i think that's probably the sword i'm excited for this i'm excited for this and he's got the the serpent the it reminds me of the world serpent almost gorgon mander i actually like how they modeled this thor kind of in the same way that they did oh they he's even got the frost giant on his back bro but check him dude He's got the um, the horn that I remember from the game. This isn't this the horn that that sounds Ragnarok. He is dripped up in Asgardian gold. He's kind of hairy too. I mean, look at him. And then of course he's got Mjolnir, ready to smite. I'm ready to see his skills. Like he looks like he's gonna put some work in. I just like how they went with this direction where they made him like super big, instead of uh, the Chris Hemsworth version. Of Thor, which you know, I have nothing obviously, obviously nothing wrong with that, but you know, yeah, he looks like he's ready to bust things up. Too, he looks like he's ready to fuck the Hydra up. Odin here looks like he's just about to step into the kitchen and cook shit up, dude. What do you call this? A stupid sandwich? Fucking smack you across the face with it. Gordon Ramsay, who? 
Let this man cook. Dear God, check him out. Loki's long-term goal is to bring about the total removal of the god's involvement in Teleria, and if that means their destruction, so be it. He sees unfreezing the waters of life as an event that can upset the balance of power in Teleria and force the intervention of the gods in such a way that can be destroyed together or destroy one another. As part of his long plan, which has many stages, many stages, he seeks to free the Fire Knight from exile's end in the Mountains of Despair. The Fire Knight? Like, the dude that drops Savage Gear? Freya, with her powers of foresight, sees what Loki is attempting, and that he has a host of Seeroth-aligned dwarves joining him. Freya takes this knowledge of Odin, who decrees that Loki must be stopped. The Fae of the Red Spikes believe Loki's actions could bring about the terrible devastation of Teleria, if not its complete destruction. Odin tells Thor it's his duty to stop Loki. Thor agrees, but he is nonetheless torn, for he and Loki were once close friends. I thought they were brothers. He doesn't know if he can stop Loki without hurting him or worse. Our players then join the story as Thor has set off on his quest to stop Loki while Loki is on his way to free the Fire Knight. Meanwhile, Freya and Odin plot in Asgard to see how they can bring a stop to Loki's plan. Like if I click it, is it gonna let me take it? Like, let's try to get all these void, or sorry, these primal packs here. Uh, ah, oh, darn, I thought too, <laughs> I thought. What about this one? Ah, oh, damn it, I thought. All right, so that was the promo video for Loki's entrance. The Asgard Divide is a new time-limited event that will involve some already well-known game mechanics, as well as spice it up with something brand new. A loyalty program with a new champion. I think that means the login reward champion thing that they got going on. Dedicated tournaments, theme champions, a new gear set that will be obtainable in the first ever event dungeon. Read along to find more. Loki, Thor, Odin, Freya will be turned into raid champions, complete with their own lore to place them naturally within the world of Teleria. I don't know if you saw this meme, but this this shit was funny, dude. It's gonna be a Loki chase. During the Asgard Divide event, every user will have a chance to obtain Loki via the 14-day loyalty program. Champion can be claimed on the seventh day before and after. Players can get various in-game rewards. We'll zoom in on this in a minute. Additionally, after collecting champions, players will be able to share a post on Facebook or Twitter and get some extra rewards. This is going to start August 21st. Deactivation date is going to be 22nd of November. That's when they're going to cease all promotions for um, Asgard and probably start working on the next thing that they're going to promote. Probably like the Christmas Thanksgiving fusion or something. Looking at the Loki chase here, so it's pretty simple if you don't already know um in the loki chase all you have to do is just log in right if loki isn't claimed it will become the shaman chase on november 22nd so if you don't get to if you don't get loki you're gonna get shaman instead so seven days log in you get him and then on the 14th day you get a two-star blessing for him you guys can see the rewards right here phase two is uh i think gonna be more blessing type stuff probably oh perfect souls or whatever that means. I think it's I think it's the same thing with Adeline or Adeline. These are Loki's skills, all right? Flame of Mischief on the A1 attacks all enemies, always a good candidate for things like stun, provoke or hex, depending on I haven't seen this yet, so this is going to be a first response type thing, but imagine bringing him to Hydra already, A1, right? Hex set has a 30% chance of increasing the duration of all enemy debuffs. That's pretty good by one turn. If this champion is under Veil or Perfect Veil, increases to 50%. That's bookable up to 70% um, here, okay? And then 75 if you want to get the appropriate masteries. Number two, or A2, Deceiver's Gambit. Four turn books to three turn cooldown. Select the target. If the target is an enemy... Oh, wait, what? If the target is an enemy... Oh, I see here. 
has a 75% chance, books up to 100% chance of placing block active skills, PvP, and a block buffs, debuff. That's for PvP and for PvE, I'm thinking Hydra. If the champion using this skill is under Veil, or Perfect Veil, also applies debuff spread. Again, really good for PvE. So, if he... It says, if the champion using this skill, which is going to be him, I don't know why anybody... Uh, I guess if you can explain that to me. If the champion, if Loki is using this skill and he's under Perfect Veil or Veil, also applies debuff spread, taking two random debuffs from the target and placing them on all enemies, just like to Tuonarok. If the target is an ally, heals them by 50% of this champion's max HP. So he's a support. I'm assuming he's going to be HP based, which is also pretty nice. Uh, heals them by 50% of... Uh, that's not confirmed. I'm just guessing that it's he's HP based of this champion's max HP. Places a perfect veil buff on them for two turns. If this champion is under veil or perfect veil, also applies buff spread, taking a random buff from the target and placing it on all allies. That's pretty cool. That's pretty new, I should say. So, like if, for example, you decide you want to target an ally here and you have somebody who has like a counter attack buff on your team, they could spread the counter attack to the rest of the team. That's pretty cool. Bandits flash, A3, four turns, 100% chance taking all buffs and 100% turn meter can't be resisted if Loki is under Veil or Perfect Veil. Well, PvP mostly. I could also see it being used in very niche ways in Hydra. Like imagine the Head of Mischief steals a bunch of buffs. You could probably try stealing it back. Obviously turn meter isn't going to be affected. I guess there's some bosses you could steal turn meter from. Maybe some buffs, dungeons. But I don't see this really as, as a PvE move. You should still build them with accuracy if you want to place these uh block active skills and block buffs that's still something you're going to want to do so and even if he doesn't steal you're still getting some sort of benefit 15 percent so maybe there's even um i don't know some speed tuning comps where you could really use this in conjunction with increased attack i don't know i'm just spitballing here his passive missed step places perfect veil on this champion for two turns at the start of each round. Also places a perfect veil buff on this champion for one turn whenever their HP drops below 50%. It's almost like he's gonna always be in um, perfect veil mode. Has a 15% chance to evade an enemy's skill and all of its accompanying effects. If this champion is under a veil or perfect veil, the evade chance increases to 30%. Evade. So he can dodge? It looks like that's what that is. 15% chance to dodge. And if he's under Veil or Perfect Veil, he has a 30% chance to dodge. If this champion's HP is below 50, when targeted by an enemy skill, 100% chance to evade that skill and all its accompanying effects. This guaranteed evade then goes on a cooldown, a four turn cooldown. So that's pretty cool. If somebody tries to single target him, he's gonna dodge it. Which is pretty cool because, you know, Loki the Deceiver, he can create copies of himself, increase accuracy by 60 points in all battles. The Event Dungeon is a brand new mechanic, game mechanic, aiming at diversifying the player's gaming experience during the event. The Event Dungeon will be available only during the Asgard Divide campaign when, oh, with Odin Father as the dungeon boss. So this is an event, and I'm going to repeat it, only available during this campaign event. Features 30 stages, normal difficulty, with difficulty rising with each stage. No waves, only a boss battle. I guess kind of like uh, when you go into Iron Twins, Spider, you know, you just go straight in and the boss is right there. Not like Fire Knight or Dragon where you have to go through like one or two stages and then you meet the boss. But beware Odin Father won't be alone but joined by mighty warriors unique for each stage of each dungeon. You know, judging by what I'm reading here, kind of like the Dark Fae. He's got champions back here. He's also got somebody back here too. So I don't know who that is. But like, homie's got champs, right? He's got other people, you know, with him. And uh, I think that's what it's going to be. We're going to walk up to this guy, kind of like in the Dark Fae, and there's going to be champions that pop up with him and we got to fight Odin 
with those dudes. The event will be available for players six and higher, but I'll tell you more tomorrow. Never have a problem with a girl if you're trying to make my heart kind of start. Let me see.